There's nothing you need to study? Uh, hmm. You sure? Yes. All right. All right. We got some good stuff ready for tonight for the CPC exam. Wanted to go over. I also have the last live from Saturday night is now posted on YouTube in case you missed it. It has a lot of critical care in it and cabbages from cardiology and stuff. So if you ever need those cabbages explained, it's on that last YouTube. I just posted a TikTok with part of that live on it, explaining some of the cabbages. Worked on some homework today. I was helping somebody with their homework. That was fun. They were giving old medical records to code and it's just pieces of paper with handwritten doctor's notes or um, documentation from post-op or something like that and you're supposed to code and that was fun that was fun except for it's a lot of tedious work because she's got like 21 patients to do in one week and you fill out a worksheet for each patient it's like it's a lot of busy work a lot of busy work for people which can be helpful but I don't know hey Jess I know you're coming up gonna be retaking soon November, we're going to get it in November for sure. For sure, for sure, we're going to get this done, get to passing the CPC exam. I have some new questions up for tonight for sure. Is there any area y'all want to see tonight? Let me know in the chat. For sure. And what I am trying to do here is work with um, the, C the AAPC CPC medical coding exam and figure out a way we can eliminate some of these answers. Bird TV went away. So I'm trying to find a way to help people pass this exam a whole lot easier with a lot less stress. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's freezing either. I hope it relaxes soon. I don't have a lot of people on the internet here. Hopefully it won't continue. Sometimes it does that for the first little bitty bit. They have all these neat new advertisings on TikTok. I guess they've done an update too. Have y'all noticed this like new game with the solar systems and now there's this rotating thing? I'm not sure. <laughs> all these new little things they have on the sides of uh, TikTok that slow down the speed. I'm hoping that it will resolve. So this question for the process of elimination for AAPC CPC exam, of course, we know A is probably going to be an outlier, right? That one's just really weird and it's a 10,000 code. So it's a little weird. We've got... 
26 is a common modifier in the rest. We don't need to worry about that since it's in all the other answers. Um, the next thing we can think about is these 385s are all the same, and then the only difference is a 00, zero an 05, and a 25. So I'd start there. Look at these three. Remember some key terms that you might need, and then look through the question to see if we can find anything that matches. So 38500, right? Yeah. 385. Where are we going to be at? And we can go over cabbages again if y'all wanted to. Zero, zero. They're all highlighted pink. So in my notes, when I first took the AAPC CPC exam, I went and scheduled my exam right away before I even tried to study for the exam. I wanted to audit the exam first and then go back and take the test for real with my second repeat one. So I went in and pink highlighted all the codes that were possible answers on my CPC exam the first time I took it. And that's why in my notes you'll see a lot of codes that are pink. So these codes were used on my CPC exam. So we've got the 00, zero we've got the 05, and then we have the 25 in this test question. They're all under the same heading. We're all under excision. We're under cardiovascular section also. So we know these things. The first one is a biopsy or removal of a lymph node. This one is a needle. And this one is an open and deep removal of a, a, a node that's going to be super um, extensive procedure to get to. So what we're going to be looking for are those differences. Are we doing a biopsy? How are we getting that biopsy? So we're going to look through the question. I like starting at the very end and work my way backwards and just do a word search. We are doing a lymph node, so that is there. There are biopsies going to be happening, which is there. But how are we doing it? It's asking this particular question we need to know. How are they doing it? Is it an open procedure? Is it just with a needle? There is the word needle. And do we see anything? We do see a scalpel used. Was used to perform a small dermatomity. So if if this is a perfect example of what AAPC is doing to try to confuse you. You're going to think that a scalpel <clears throat> is going to mean that you're doing an open procedure. Like this is going to be a major thing because they said the word scalpel. But it's not. Um, this is just using a small needle <clears throat> to remove four biopsies. And it's not an excision, and we're not doing anything with a lymph node. We're only doing superficial by the needle because of the derm word is telling us we're staying in the dermis. We're not getting under or in any muscle at all. So our key terms for this question are definitely the derm, the needle, and we can confidently say that this one is going to be C and move on. 
for this one. It's interesting that we have some <clears throat> excisions in the lymph nodes in cardiology section. You know, you might think that you wouldn't be doing something like this in this particular area. So it's neat to have examples on every single page throughout your CPT book so that you get exposed to everything that's in each section. I like to make sure that I have two examples per page. This one has three, but making sure that you go through here and know what's going on in the sections and not assuming that's the only things that are in these sections are, is sometimes helpful for the CPC exam because you put up these mental blocks. I know I'm in cardiology. I know there's no biopsies here. Why, you know, I'm in the wrong section. You might get yourself confused. So I don't know why the throat is so awful today, but I'm trying to make it better with some hot tea. Hopefully, going through these examples with me will let you know everything that's on all of these little chapters. Hopefully, we'll eventually get to everything that's in them. So, I hope that's helpful. The CPC exam through the AAPC is a bear, and I just want to see if I can make a difference and help people out and figure out a process to get these questions answered a whole lot easier so that it's not such a struggle. First thing I like to do is look at this numbers that are available for answers numerically to see what similarities I have. So A and C start out with the same code, which I like, and then B and D are super close. They follow right along the 50, 60, and 70. So there's no real reason to exclude anything right now. And we can um, keep these for right now and before we move on to our next one. COPD, yes, with aspirations. Yeah, I can go over some of those. Um, so 449. 50, 449. Some more of my pink highlights. So we've got 449, 50, 60, and 70. The differences are that the 50 and 60 are under excision, and then 70 is under laparoscopic. So first thing I want to do is see if I need to exclude laparoscopic or not. So we're going to skim through this long note from backwards up and see if we notice anything about them doing anything about a laparoscopic procedure. This appendix is already ruptured, and they did a transverse incision to make entry into the abdomen. So is that laparoscopic? No, it's not. So anytime you see the transverse, you know that that is not going to be laparoscopic. So we can get rid of our answer. We can get rid of our answer for the number 70. So we just need to know the difference between the 50 and the 60. 60 is ruptured and 50 is just a normal appendix. We know this person had the ruptured one, so we get to pick B and we don't have to worry about any diagnosis codes after that because if we had had to pick 50, 
those have the same diagnosis codes or something different, we would need to look those up. But we get to pick 60, which is B, because the patient did already have ruptured. And that's the only one that is a procedure for a ruptured appendix. And that is for 44960. So B is our answer on that one. Not hard for that one. That one wasn't bad at all. On. Are you talking about COPD as a diagnosis code or COPD as any procedures that are needed? So our COPD is going to be around our J's, A, B, C, D, E, F, H, I, and then J, J44 something, that's asthma, COPD. This is the new 2022 version of your ICD-10 book for um, coding diagnoses. We have emphysema before COPD. We have asthma coded after COPD. Don't forget the very beginning of this section, too, of the J section, has a really, really, really good anatomy oh. overview of everything that has to do with lungs. The anatomy of all your respiratory system is all here. Anything you need to know about anatomy for the respiratory system. And then they go into the diseases including COPD, pneumonia, asthma, abscesses, all that stuff is here. And then cystic fibrosis, COPD, and some other ones that are here. And then there's room for notes too. So don't forget there's some anatomy lessons right there too. And let's see if I can find any examples with COPD. So my notes from previous years, which I haven't added to the old book, to the new book yet, um, I've got what I have written here is that our J44.0 is for an acute respiratory infection for our chronic obstructive pulmonary disease process. Then we've got our J44.1, which is an acute also, but it has our exasperation that you were asking about. 
And so if it is unspecified and doesn't tell us whether it's exasperated or not, you would use your J44.9 for unspecified, just not said whether it is. If it is saying it has exasperation, you're going to use the J44.1. And if it's an acute with a respiratory infection, you're going to say it's J44.0. There's also that um, Synvisc virus. Um, a lot of babies get the Synvisc virus, but elderly people are susceptible to it too. It's a type of pneumonia. Um, we give babies RSV shots and some Synvisc shots if they're super premature. If you have a child, I mean an adult, who has COPD and they end up with the Synvisc virus pneumonia, it's still considered a lower respiratory infection because it's the pneumonia, right? So we're still going to give them the J44.0. The other code, the J12.1, that we would give them with it is that RSV pneumonia diagnosis, which would be secondary in that particular situation. Let's say I had a J20 that went on my phone that went along with it. Mm. Bronchitis. So if they have bronchitis with with COPD with history of smoking we're still going to give them the J44.0 COPD with a lower respiratory infection, which is bronchitis, which will be their J20.9 for their bronchitis. And then their history of smoking dis dependence will be your F17.210. And that's the, the one that I have up here. But any kind of COPD with anything else, bronchitis, pneumonia, RSV, you're going to give them the J44.0. Anytime the doctor documents that it's COPD exasperation, it's the J44.1. And if they're not telling you anything, at all, then you've got the J44.9. I hope that's helpful. I got Jupiter and Venus. Yay, yay, yay. And some roses. The more we get on that, um, on the Creator Fund, the more I can give away free um, stuff to people from my um, files on Etsy. So you can get um, copies of my notes. Let's see. I wonder, I don't know if I know where all that stuff is right away. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. That's what we've got so far that can be donated to them. So that's pretty fun. Look at all that. 3,000 diamonds. <laughs> I don't know what all that means, but it's super fun to watch it 
roll about and collecting the moons is so cool that's so neat right around Halloween time so I hope that is helpful um, Miss Joyce I hope that helps a lot in explaining the the COPDs it would be um, a good thing to, for me to make up a, a one-sheeter on that one too one of these days, gosh, i got so many things I'd love to make for you guys to help out. One thing I made this week was, let's see, what did I do with it? What did I do with it? This one right here. This prolonged services sheet. Oh, just blah, blah. It's like page, what did I say it was on? Page 40 or something or... Yeah, in E and M. So if you're in the 2021 book, it's on page 40. It's this chart that's right here. Ugh. Move it down. That has prolonged services, but right now we're under prolonged services, direct patient contact. Then they have prolonged services without direct patient contact and then they have prolonged services for clinical staff and then more for outpatient and more for hospital and they've got a couple of pages of all this mess so the easiest way to do it is what I think is by making three headings on this one chart out hospital outpatient and non face to face up on the top of the header like I tried to do here but I did them in different colors for this year and then for anything that's prolonged less than 30 minutes you use a regular E&M service then if you have these minutes right here for prolonged services if they're in a hospital you code this if they're in an outpatient setting you code this if they're non face to face but they're still having to work on the patient, you know, at the nurse's center or something, you know, then the code's going to be this. And it's all on one chart so that if you tab this page during your, for the CPC exam and your question for the exam over here has anything to do with the prolonged services, you've got it all labeled, all on one chart. You're not having to flip through all these pages to look for which one it is we can make it fit like this and I did all the hospital in one color all the outpatient in one color and all the non face to face in one color and there is no um, outpatient or non face to face that that's that's over a hundred minutes so none of that but anyway it just combines all three is what I was trying to do and I gave that out in our study chat group if anybody is interested in hanging out with our study chat group we chat every day hear about things wish everybody good luck of course and talk about things that uh, we have coming up I query hand out things um, that I think are important. You can search our group once you get in there by hitting the I icon and then going to photos and videos and then you can see just the things that I've passed out given um, for information wise that are super handy for taking the CPC exam. Like I love this one about which part of the brain controls which part of your functions. That's super helpful. Should be added to your book um, in the nervous system somewhere or wherever we have the brain drawn in here. But our little chat group works real hard. And uh, I let everybody know when I go live too <clears throat> on it. Because sometimes I just pop up and say let's do a live. And then... A lot of times I'll do the whole two or three hour countdown. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. Miss 
Jarvis, I was just looking at what is expected recently enrolled in school, and I'm medical terminology part. Medical terminology is fun. Now that you have all your um, medical terminology right in front of you, the best thing to do for it when you get ready is if you have your CPT book, either this year's or next year's book, go on and go, and as you're learning each section, you can go to Intignitary, which is like skin, and you can start putting in your prefixes and suffixes in the front of the section before the coding starts, adding in things that you're learning, um, marking up the anatomy on some of the drawings that may have parts drawn but not labeled. All that will help you during the CPC exam. Um, if you go through here and do every section, like I have, this is muscular skeletal, writing your prefixes, your suffixes, and then adding to some of the body parts that aren't listed that you'll note in your terminology class, that'll help you along the way. It extends your knowledge. It also um, helps put more information in these books. A hundred of your test questions for a medical coding exam will come from this one book. So I try to get everything into it as much as possible so that we don't have to go searching for things in other locations. Um, especially anything that you can add to the cardiology section, any prefixes, suffixes that you can add as you're learning. Um, do a different color per so that things light up so it's not all just blue blob of something um, is my recommendation and also if you're going to start writing in this book because the pages are super thin and you don't want a lot of bleeding and you don't want a lot of um, wearing away of the ink as soon as you write on it use the sharpie ultra fine um, ones. The highlighters, it doesn't matter. My personal preference is to use the push button so that I don't have to uncap it and recap it every time I'm doing it. Um, but I just get the highlighters from the 99 cent store. Or I like the super coupon. So when they come out with all the school supplies, I like to go in there and clip a bunch of coupons and end up walking out with 25 cent packs of highlighters of eight different colors and buy a whole bunch of those. I like to do that stuff. So as you're doing your terminology, add to these books, add to the sections of um, each one of the areas. In the book, that'll save you time later when you decide to go into coding and It'll also be extra help during your medical terminology course because you're utilizing it somewhere else too. Super helpful. Add your prefixes, add your suffixes, add your major terms, words as you find them. Super helpful. My study group is on Messenger. So <clears throat> to join it, you need to find me personally on Messenger at Jen Brewer. And that's the profile pic, the same one that's on TikTok here. Find me, just message me, um, and then I will add you into the group. The group is, um, I don't know why it's unable to be found, but um, I'll add you as soon as you message me. That's my Uncle David. And then I can put you in. So I'm not sure where you'd be on Facebook or Messenger, but I don't think you need to have Facebook. I think you can just download the um, the Messenger app on your phone and just use Messenger. But I can add you there. She didn't get the CPT book yet. It's okay. <laughs> you 
Yes. Happy, happy to help. Happy to help. And if they, they've already got the 2022 books out. So hopefully they can give that to you. And that's really good information. It's an open book test for medical coding. So the more information you can get written in here to add, to aid in, to you being able to find the answer quickly, it's super helpful. <clears throat> My mom's name is Cynthia. Cynthia just asked to join our chat group. So that's great. All right. Let's practice another. Yeah, you were able to buy the Netters book and you love it. That's awesome. I love it too. It is just crazy interesting. I haven't audited it all the way through, but what I saw, I just really loved. There is this publisher who took the CPT codes by like kidneys, okay? And he drew an artsy, more, way more detailed than this, um, picture of the kidneys. And then he would take all the CPT codes related to kidneys by procedure types and put them around the picture. And I don't know, I just, I really liked the way it was set up and the little comments that it had. It wasn't too wordy made a little bit more sense so I really liked the way they set up that book and the pictures were way better I recommend an auditor one because auditing risk auditing um, HEDIS measures auditing your fellow co-workers as they are coding will do nothing but increase your salary and increase and decrease the amount of actual work that you have to do on a job. So if you're an auditor, you're not coding 100 charts per day like you're supposed to in quota, but you're auditing 25% of what they do. Um, it also moves you up into administration. You get higher pay for the less work that you do. The auditing certificate is my number one thing. Not that I need a lot more of you guys out there competing with me, but that is 100% the way that medical groups are going. Everything is um, going to value-based healthcare, and it needs to be audited to make sure that it's appropriate. Auditing is not hard at all. You've done the hard part is getting the CPC. That's the hard part. I have RNs who can't get the CPC. So the CPC is the hard part. Auditing is black and white. There's no if this or exclude that or it's just black and white, this and this. And they're just taking these codes and making sure that you have that code with that diagnosis and that it's done properly. That's it. And they give you the exact combination that you need to audit to make sure that that is there. Super easy. Anybody can do it, I promise. And just having that auditing certificate will move you up income-wise if you're talking about how to further your career. Um, risk is super popular too. So if you wanted to go into risk management, it's a little bit more complicated, I always thought, but... I always like putting, I, I put up these barriers between me and a subject and think, oh, I don't want to do that. It just seems so complicated. Well, every diagnosis is given a value point, like 1.22. Your age is given a value point, 0 0.22. Um, your job, your career, your social determinations, Every diagnosis, if you have renal disease or if you um, never come to the doctor and don't have any diagnosis codes, it's all value points 
and the sicker your patients are, the more points they have, and you want to capture those patients that have the higher points and really audit those patients and see why are their points so high, what can we do to negate that, can we get them home services, can we get them extra teaching, can we send a pharmacist to their house to manage their meds. Groups will do anything to get those numbers lowered because the higher your risk, the more you're going to pay out. So risk is is the other thing that a lot of groups are going to. And if you wanted to figure out how to code risk, it too will be a very good place to go. EHRs will do it all for you. They all have the formulas. They know what the diagnoses are and how much of a value point they are. You'll run reports out of your EHR to show your highest risk scores or you'll find that your doctors are diagnosing things wrong. Like The other day I was talking about TIAs if your patients are having many strokes, they're not doing it in the office while they're getting an office visit in front of you. They're getting their blood pressure checked. They're doing a post-follow-up TIA. Well, the, one of the most misdiagnoses is TIA. Well, they can't have it in the office. I mean, unless they're stroking out in front of you and you're calling an ambulance. Most It's supposed to be history of. So you capture diagnoses and fix those risk ones that are being captured incorrectly and get that education to the physicians is what risk does. Um, it's not hard. It's just a lot of numbers. I like auditing a lot better, which is not a lot of difference. It's just I don't have to deal with the minuscule little add their um, third K, their their um, third stage three kidney disease with their hypertension, with their diabetes, with their amputation of the right leg. All that goes away every January 1st. Every patient is 100% healthy come January 1st again, and all limbs have grown back. And everybody has a zero risk score again. And then you got to recapture everything throughout the year, all over again. It just seems over and over and over again. Um, where HEDIS measures and other things that I audit are not like that. So, but the offices and the groups are paying a lot of money for people to help them capture all their risk points and make sure that they're getting them. So risk is another area for sure. How long after taking the CPC do you recommend go for the, C the auditor? Right away. Go for it right away. The fresher the codes are in your system, the better. And you only need to learn one more part for the, for the auditor exam. Uh, which is some more compliance and guidelines. And that's, you know, instead of having just 10 compliance guideline questions, um, you'll have more of those. But it's nothing that you can't just write in the front of your book and have it written out in front of you with all the answers written there. All your risk and compliance guidelines can go in the front of the book before your E&M section. And so doing an auditing one, I would write down all your guidelines for auditing in the front on these front pages, fill them up different colors for different sections and go on and pass that auditor right away because you've already got all the code part of it, all the anatomy part of it, all your um, ICD-10 guidelines, your top 10 guidelines down enough to pass. You can write in all the auditing part of that guidelines in the front. 
you're good to go for that exam. I would go for it right away. Have them both on your resume. Shoot. All you need is your extra guidelines. There's just a few extra guidelines. They want you to make sure that instead of just 10 questions, you know about 30 of them, and that's it. It's not bad at all. Let me pull up the thing and see what it was. Um, it was... I don't remember it being that many at all. It's the same exact thing. And how hard is it to communicate? You just got to communicate. The exam breakdown. Your medical record standing. Your coding re reimbursement concepts. Still things that you can put right here in the front of your book. Um, And you're still going to end up having a little bit of risk adjustment, but there's only nine questions about risk. And um, the risk is, is not that hard. It's just adding numbers to the diagnosis codes, but that's all done for you through the EHR. I would absolutely just get the study guide alone. Don't buy the whole course for... Um, auditing just get the study guide and write what's in the study guide in the front sections for getting your auditing compliance certificate right away as soon as you can absolutely love it love it love it those are my favorites they're coming out with some new ones. The new documentation specialist. Uh, I don't know. I don't hear a lot of buzz about that kind of stuff from the um, workplace. What I see on Indeed or what I see that they're asking me to do or want to know if I can do is billing, which I do not want to do. <clears throat> I got asked today if I would do billing remotely for a home health agency today. I'm like, I don't want to do billing. It wouldn't be so bad if you didn't have so many denials or um, rejections due to the data warehouses and you have to keep up with the IT department and submitting all those files to the data warehouse and then they go to CMS and then get them back. It gets crazy. It'd be all right if it was just billing what's on the chart and sending it somewhere, but there's so much more that goes along with it than that. But you get your CPC, you get your medical auditing you're really, really doing really good with those for getting any position you wanted at a doctor's office. They are, of course, looking for billers. Everybody's always looking for billers. Practice me measurements and compliance. You know, if you want to be in the healthcare system and in the building and be an administrator, in the office, those two areas are good for that. But if you want remote positions, working from home, billing, auditing, and coding, for sure. And the auditor will throw you up into a higher paying bracket in either one of those billing or coding areas where the work is less and you're getting paid more, for sure. For sure. Okay, why are you not? Here we go. Come on. We need to focus on all this stuff. Focus, focus. We're still getting some low scores. The more and more I go over the 6,000 category, we're still getting lower scores in this area. So I found some more questions 
for our six thousands. So let's go back to practicing one of these real quick to see if we can't get these scores up. We've got a 22 and a 58 just in the last numbers. If I was evaluating the last numbers for the CPC and AAPC exam, just looking at these numbers numerically, I really like C and B because they not only start the same with the 613, they're only just a, a little piece away, the 43 and the 45. Yep, very good, Jess. So I would go straight to that code, the 613, 613. Hope everybody had a good Halloween. I'm still in a sugar coma over here. 61343 and 45. We've got these two codes and I don't have a lot written in on these at all. My pink code for this section was up here and it was a de decompression, but it looks like we've got a craniotomy or some other cranial decompression. So we need to scan our little note here and see what we're doing. We are doing a craniotomy. So we need to look for where we are doing. I need to look for a word. See that lenectomy? I like that word because I think it was in some of these. May not be. It's not in that one. Lenectomy, there it was. It was in this one, the 43. I like that one. The lenectomy. This one did not have the lenectomy in it. But the 43 did. So I've got two word matches here. I've got the craniotomy that matches, and then I have the lenectomy that matches also. So I would feel confident in picking that 43 and moving on with that one as our answer, which it is. I don't recommend tabbing because um, it gets in the way. the the test the The test questions are going to be going numerically, so the answers are just numbers. So you're not going to the index. You're not going to be looking up anything like you normally would as a coder. You're just going to go thumbing through for your numbers. So just coding by the numbers. I just need these sides to be open. If you want to tab things, like I did do that chart for you for the um, E&M section, the prolonged services, I would tab things at the top, like Appendix A at the top. Just have it out of the way instead of the side view, if that makes any sense for you at all. If you're going to tab, put your tabs at the top, just to, for a few things. Like you need your, um, any charts that I've given you that you have, and then your Appendix A and Appendix L back here that you might need. But this all needs to stay untabbed, I think, so you can find the numbers quickly, because you're just looking for numbers through the entirety of the exam. And all those little tabby things just get in your fluffer way as you're going, I think.
Here's our next one. So this one looks like we've got answer. The very first answer is all the same. So we don't need to look up that one at all. What we have different is our second code. They all have the same modifier, so we don't need to worry about the modifier. What we need to worry about is this 05, the 25, the 30, and the 35. They're all so close together, I really can't put one as an outlier, but C might be because it's so much further away from these guys or not. So I need to go look and see what these are first. 75. So, 756. So, we're just thumbing through till we find our 75s. And you know, my way of doing everything isn't 100% perfect for everybody. You find your own way, whatever makes you feel comfortable for sure. But I'm showing you, trying to show you in a real world example. This is exactly how the CPC exam is going to go. You have 120 seconds per question, and that's before you even open up the answer booklet. You've got to get that answer booklet open. You've got to turn to the right page. The time's already started. It's already been ticking down, and you've got two tabs you need to break. You need to open up. You need to go find your first question, and then you need to line up your bubble sheet and, and get started and go to your first question, whether you go from the front of the book to the back of the book, but you've already lost seconds. So I'm telling you and trying to show you how it really will be and how fast you really need to get through these questions. So 7, 5, 6, 25. We've got 25, 30, and 35. So if you already have some information written down underneath these codes, like I do for each one, it's helpful because I can see right away, without even looking at the test question yet, guys, that these two are the two similar, and I know AAPC's pattern is to give me two throwaways answers and then two that are going to be so similar that it's going to be one or the other, right? Right. So I'm assuming A and B are going to be these two, 25 and 30. They're so similar. So I'll throw away that 35. And I've already done my throw away of the 05 because it's numerically so far away from these other two. And then once I got to these codes, I realized that one of them is a CTA, which is different than these two non-sequels. So these two non-sequels is probably what they're wanting me to make sure I know the difference between these. One of them is a seriography, and one of them is just abdominal. The other one is abdominal plus ilio so i need to know if we're doing ilio or not so if i don't see an ilio then we're good to go with the 25 so i'm going to search my question not reading going from the last word in reverse order and i am doing that seriography but am i doing anything with an ilio nope no ilio it's all just the one code. A is going to be our answer. Show you the difference. Seven, 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 five, six. So this one is just abdominal. Our other one is going to be doing some lower extreme. Midi, it's going to be going down into the lower legs. This one is just doing the the arteries in the, in the um, abdomen area. So if they're not listing anything at all to do with any extremity, we've only got 
the abdominal aorta. Okay, you know they go in the left femoral artery, so don't let them fool you with that. All those artery ones go up the artery. That's just the entrance. But as they're getting to the test, the test is only for that abdominal aorta right there. They would have said they extended it down to the lower extremity if they did, but they didn't. In any of these areas, they only did the abdominal aorta right there. So it's the definitely your 25 and not your 30. And we can move on to our next test question. You need to be able to do these questions by eliminating the, the CPTs that you don't want to look at, the common modifiers that won't make a difference, narrowing it down to just the last few CPs, T's that would make a difference, and you need to look those up. You look those up first, see what the differences are before you go to your question, and then start word matching with the question. That way you don't get the extra verbiage that's inside the question that is meant to confuse you, like at the top here where it says you go in from the femoral artery, you might think that that's an extremity, but it's not. That's the entrance of any arterial procedure. We should have just stopped at abdominal aorta because that's where the catheter advanced to. You don't need to read the top two sentences or look for any more word searching words. That's it. That's all they did was where the catheter went was to that aorta done. You don't look at anything else. You need to not act like a coder and read everything. You can't. They will put words in those questions to confuse you. So I have a moss here that I don't have any answers to. Somebody had asked me to do a moth tonight and I wanted to code it just code it as a coder would, not code it like the AAPC would for a question, if that's all right with everybody. We could do that real quick. So I did a quick workout before. Yes, 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 yes. I've heard that before. Some lady goes and runs before her exam, and then that way she can come back much better focused. Don't forget about the, um, thank you for the roses. Think, don't forget about peppermint. If you are sucking on, you know, like the Sonic gives you those hard little round candies. Studies show that if you um, have one of those in your mouth during an exam, you make better scores. Isn't that crazy? That's the only change up that they do. I do. Do you recommend taking the online classes through AAPC? I don't recommend classes at all. I think it's too expensive. If you have money or grant money to throw at it, then have at it if you want to. I just don't think you get, you're, you're going to be happy with your course. Um, you could go on and on and on about it, but, um, I don't, I think just getting their study guide with any kind of certification and their practice practice exams is plenty. You There is enough YouTube videos. There is enough information in the study guide alone that's way better than their online course. Um, all the anatomies in there. All the guidelines are in there. Everything's in there that you need to know. Um... I think their study guide book is is perfect, and you can get a previous year's study guide because they don't update it very often, um, and it's just as good. My 2019 has the same questions and answers in it as the 2021 version does, so I'm telling you, you don't have to get an updated version, but you can get a used one from eBay or something. Do the study guide. Um Find you some practice exams, mark up your CPT book the way that I teach you to, which is your boxing, your core codes with your parent codes, you're marking your do nots, 
and your dues. If you need to use modifiers or not, you need to mark those. In your parenthetical notes, you need to add to the anatomy. You need to add to your vocabulary. You need to practice this process of elimination with tons of questions. You need to write two examples of how you would code a particular code on every page of the CPT book. You also need to fix your out-of-sequence codes. There's a lot of codes that are numerically out of order, even though the book is in numeric order, and you need to go through there and write the page numbers down beside the ones that are out of numerical sequence, telling you where the code is um, so that you don't have to go look for it in the middle of your exam because that will slow you down. They give you a range of codes to go look in for that one particular code. You need to just go put the page number down. That will save you a lot of stress because you only have 90 seconds per question really and you need to get that done. So that all these steps for this um, can be done. You can self-teach your way through through this you don't need any education to sit for the AAPC CPC exam or any of their auditing exams except for their instructor exam um, you can do it all by yourself you don't need to pay thirty five hundred dollars for a course to do this promise especially if you have a mentor somebody like me um, that can help you out and show you the tips and tricks on how to pass the exam. That's what I like to do. I'm not a coder. I'm an auditor. And I audited their exam and felt like their course that went along with it was insufficient in providing any type of education for passing the CPC exam. It will help you be sort of maybe a coder, but not really because it's all different. When you get into a new job, um, they all code differently based off their contracts. And um, coding is just done through the EHR now. So it's, it's totally different. It's not anything like what they're teaching in the class. Um, Anatomy is always good to learn, but the ICD-10 book has a complete anatomy section and vocabulary and disease process in it. You can get everything you need to know for anatomy and terminology from your ICD-10 book. And, yeah, I don't think you need a course. That's just my opinion. And, I mean... Everybody, I've not spoken to anybody that paid the $3,500 and was happy with their course. Even the ones that do the physician-led ones are not happy with their course and don't understand. And they're getting me to tutor them to help them with even their homework because they don't even understand how to do it. It's just fast. So much information thrown at you in an illogical manner that doesn't give you the foundation you need to build on for success. So, Moss, I'm on page 119 of the CPT book. These skin excisions are coded differently than everything else in integumentary system. They have their own set of guidelines that are different than anything in this integumentary system. I refused to learn them for the longest time, but now they're pretty easy for me. You code these first by location, the number of stages, and that means how many times the doctor went back to the body and removed a piece of flesh. Ooh, that sounds weird. And then the third thing is you code by how many blocks, and that just simply means how much skin flesh did they remove from that body part when they went so the first thing you need to know is the body part where are they doing this moth this is not going to be an ABC thing we're just coding it as we were coders which is unusual for me I never do this but I know a lot of people really 
struggle with moss. So I still wouldn't read it word for word. I'd still be looking for ways to get not to have to read this word for word. And I do come across where it says nasal tip right there. So I know I'm on the nose. So number one, we're, we need location, right? So we're in the nose. So we'll look. Moths are broken up into two main locations. Either the 17311 or the 17313. And those two are your locations. That's the only two locations you will have for moss. So this one has head, neck, hands, feet, genitalia, and all that good stuff. But then the other one over here has what location, what body parts does it have? Trunk, arms, legs, trunk, arms, and legs for that one. So we know we're not on an extremity with the nose, so we know we're going to be right here. So since we're going to be at 17311, we just need to find out how many stages the procedure has now. Number two is stage, and that means how many times the doctor goes back to the body to remove body parts. This code, this main first one, is the first stage. If they go back and cut more parts off, it'll be the second one. Same thing if we were here doing an extremity. This would be first stage, this would be second stage, or more. So right here, under this question, they even have it highlighted right there, stage one, blah, blah, blah. I don't see anything that comes across as having or saying they're going to have a stage two, because that is the end of the statement right here. And then right here, I don't know if y'all can see that, it says tissue was divided into two tissue blocks because our third thing we needed to find out was how many blocks right and that's it the rest of this I don't care about how much lidocaine was used how he got the piece out I don't care about the debunking defect or hemostasis I don't care about nothing don't even really care about the size of it. That's it. All I need to know are those three things. Location, stage, how many times he went back, and then how many blocks. How many blocks were there? That's all you need to know. So this one is simply coded this because we did not have more than five blocks. If we did have more than five blocks, if that one piece of skin was cut up into six pieces, that's where this fancy little plus code comes in at. No matter what location, it could be either location, it doesn't matter. Anything over five gets an add-on code, which is that pink plusy. It's the only one that goes with either body part. It's this 115 right there. If that stage had been cut up into six blocks, we would have added this code. But since it's only been cut up into two blocks, we can simply code this 311 and move on with our day. That's all there is to it. Hopefully that helps a little bit with coding Ultimate Medical Academy. <laughs> Sounds very official.
but I paid and has to go and ran out of time, ran out of money. Yeah, I would go on and get your CPC, work as a CPC and slowly take a course a month if you wanted to online through an online university like, I don't know, like my community college or even the uh, state of Arizona, University of Arizona has a HIT course um, and I could go through there one course every semester which could be three courses a year and use grant money because there's extra grant money now due to COVID and just take an online class I'll do English 101 first and then English 102 and then, you know, eventually get all your um, credits done and you could get your bachelor's and go into HIT if you wanted to. And it wouldn't take you that long um, to get it done. It's better than losing the five years that you lost here. You could have been that much closer to it but if you're working in the field too it helps um you're making money you're learning and then you could whip out those courses really quick on the side use grant money don't spend any real money and most of the answers are online for all these courses every college course even aapc i mean there's Answers on Quizlets for every single course known to man now online. They can't keep the answers from getting out there. You just copy paste and put the answers in and move on with your day. Um, you can even Google lend your homework and find the answers. My kids, I find them doing that nowadays. Jeez. So it's it's all there. You can get it done easier than paying up front for a big huge thing and then having time taken away from you because life is a struggle I think it's best to self-study get your CPC start working and then if you want to further your career get your auditing certificate and if you still want to get your bachelor's degree work on that as you are an auditor and you're not going to have any trouble finding extra time to work on your classwork while you're working as an auditor. Guarantee you can do both those at the same time. You have plenty of extra time. That's what I do. I'm an auditor and I have extra time to help you guys out. Even though I still have a full-time job. So, yeah. Thank you for the follow. Confidently caffeinated. I love that. Some of the names are so creative. So creative. All right. Let's work on another one. If you were in the AAPC CPC exam right now and you needed to figure out fast what is the answer to this one you need to know the process of elimination which you just look through the codes numerically to see what is different so I've got two 96's which I like because they're the same a 97 that's the same and then we've got a 92 that might be off the wall because it's a little lighter so I would run straight to these 96s and 97 and see what the differences are on these codes real quick. So I've got 206s, 206s. Wrong way, wrong way. Going way down here. Two oh six. 
nine six and nine five. Two of six, nine six. Ooh, we've got nine six and nine seven. So nine six down here. My mother's company. My mother worked in Memphis, Tennessee for a company called Smith and Nephew Richards, and we sort of invented these things. Anyway, years and years, decades ago, fun stuff. She kept up with their inventory, and they used to have paper inventory. Then they went to IBM and all this stuff, and she had to learn DOS and all this stuff. And she had nothing but her high school education. She ended up running their inventory for all their medical supplies. So it was really pretty cool, pretty cool. I was real proud of her. She did really good. I never intended in going on medicine or medical career, and it just kind of ended up happening that way. But I never I always thought what she did was so boring. Inventory, you think, is just so boring. But now I find it fascinating as I see pictures of what she was keeping track of. Sorry. Reminiscing. So we've got 96 and 97. 97, by the way, is modifier excluded for which modifier? Which modifier? Which modifier can be excluded from lots of CPTs? It is modifier 51. It is on the bottom of every left-hand page of your CPT book. And they have a list of them that are modifier 51 excluded. So just one of those test questions they always ask. Anyway, the difference between 97 and 96... One of them is an application, and this one is the exchange. Application and exchange. That's your keywords you need to search for. So we just need to scroll backwards and see what are we doing for this person. Jim was discharged. There it is right there. He's now requires an exchange. That's your key word. Just search backwards. Then you don't have to read the whole entire question. Get confused with everything else. D is going to be your answer. You don't need to add another code with it. Because if you look right here where it's got the 97 with the 92. Or the 97 with the 96. Which I don't have marked. Which I should. See I got better at this. If you ever want a copy of my notes... The medicine section is the best because I was starting out and learning about what y'all needed here in the very beginning of the book. It says don't use in conjunction with 92 and 96, which is what AAPC is trying to make you think that you need to combine them. But D is your answer all by itself. They're just doing the exchange. Thank you for sharing the live. Yep. Oh, looky there. She wrote 051. Love it. Is how I passed the first try. That was the first thing I looked for. Awesome. That's up. Hello, Matt. <laughs> I love the process of elimination. I also like to extend it to make sure that we look for abnormalities in the answers to see if there's something there that just absolutely would not be coded with something else that it's it's an anomaly that would never be done that way we see a couple of those in the AAPC exam where they'll put something totally off the wall with another one that wouldn't go. For the process of elimination for this one, we don't have to worry about the modifiers because 
they're in all of them, right? I keep doing that and I cannot draw a straight line to save my soul. But we don't need to worry about the modifiers. They're in all of them except for the last one down here. Um, we have two five fours, which I, you know I really like right here on A and B. And we would not have to look up those first CPT codes because they're in the same answer. The difference you look, the 88 is the same, the J is the same, the J is the same. The only thing that is different is the 56 and the 67. That's what I would concentrate on. See if we have a word match with A and B because they're so similar. So I would go straight to the 31256. One, two, five, six. We're doing five, six, and sixty seven. There's five, six, and sixty seven. They're right underneath each other. We have some more do nots that I did not mark. So we're, the differences in these two. This one is re with removal, and the other one is just a regular sinus thingy. We need to see if we're doing a removal or not. So we're just going to skim the bottom of the question, the last word, and we're going to go in reverse and just skim for anything that says anything about a removal. Of course, they're going to remove some of the packing and stuff that was going on during the surgery. We got a big note with this one. The doctor was extra wordy. They're coming in for recurrent polyps in their sinuses. Oh, sounds terrible. It is bilateral. That's why we had all those 50s, right? With Polynectomy. What is an O M Y? What does that mean? What does that mean? Hello. That means that they did the removal. Anytime they do the ectomy, that means that we are going to use that 67 code. Come on, don't be that mean. We are going to use the removal code, which is going to be the 67. So the only one right there that we like with our 67 is going to be B. And I would pick it all day long and move on to our next question. Super, super easy. There's our answer. Answer B. Yeah, they cut into them, but then they also did... Um, it was a scope. The first one is the scope, and then the uh, removal of the test tissue is cutting into it and removing it. Yep. Perfect. Here's our next one. This one we've got two zero zeros and then two sixties. So I would go look up the differences between those two and then we could eliminate it down to just the diagnosis code. So three one four zero zero. Three one four zero zero is right here. On the very next page, 31560. Is that going to be over here? It's over here. So we've got a laryngoscope versus an ARY tendo 
tendinectomy and a scope, an ectomy and a scope. So let's search our thing and see what we're doing. I see that tendoid right there, and I do see a scope. So we are going to be doing our scope, right? So we're going to keep our 60, and we'll get rid of the two answers right away that don't have the scope in them. These are the scopes. Are we doing bilateral with the 50 or not? Do you have two of those? Vocal cords? And it does say they are doing bilateral. <laughs> this one is a tricky one because you do not need the modifier. This procedure is for both. Making notes so I can put that in on our 2022 notes for next time. This one right here, we've got an 01 and an 05 and then a 70 and a 90. So we end up having like two separate little areas of where we might want to go. 31070. 31070 is... Three one zero seventy is up near the sinuses. Are we doing something in the sinuses? Let's look at our note real quick and see. We are doing something maybe in the nasal, sort of in the eye area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The three two three one two. 31205 is on the very next page and it's the one with the orbital and I remember seeing something in our question that does say something about the eye. Oh gosh, that would be awful. Anytime you have to deal with the nose and the eyes, my eyes just automatically start watering so hardcore. So, your key words right here are ethmoid sinus with your extra nasal approach. Those are your key terms in the question that will match up with your CPT book. We've got our ethoid up here in our cord, and then we have our exonasal approach. So the 3105 is our answer for this one, which is B. If I can get my mouse to come back to life. There you are. Circle that one. Done.
for this one, for the process of elimination, we've got 0, 0, and they're all all over the place. Look at this, 465, 460, 462, and 469, all over the place, sincerely. Where in the world would we go? The fours and the sixes are the same. Other than that, we've got a 0, 2, a 5, and a 9. I probably think this 9 is just too far away. So it'd be somewhere up in here is the answer. Start at the top, 46500. 0, 0. 465. There's too much to decipher right there, so you just got to get started and get moving because if you spend too long trying to decipher the process of elimination for some of them, you're just going to waste too much time. Just start going, especially when there's only just one code per answer. Super easy just to run to the code and see what's going on. Six four six five zero zero is hemorrhoids in a solution. So let's see what did they do for these hemorrhoids. They did use the liquid cirrhosing solution. And that's exactly what you have in this one. Cirrhosing solution. You're done. You've got that much matching up to the question, you should pick A and you should move on. None of these other ones are going to have anything that's going to match that well with it. 46083, that one's right here. The eight, this is B, 83 has nothing that's matching up except for the word hemorrhoids, right? And these are external what we had was internal to, you see the word internal, not even going to match. You could spend your time searching through all these. You're never going to find something that matching. So when you find something that matches, there's only four words in this description and three of them match your test question you're done don't look anymore just keep going that will help you out more than anything else for sure this one right here we've got two that end in 61 so I'm gonna like those right away this one's 60, so I'll keep it in mind, but this one has a left, and then these have um, a modifier with left. So, interesting. Would we use the 50 with a, a left? What's 50 modifier? You can either go to tab A, um, or you can go to the front. That says bilateral procedure. Would you ever use bilateral and then go on and say we're doing the left side? Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't. So we would get rid of anything like that for sure. I still like C because it's almost like B. So let's go see what 68761 is. Six eight seven six one. Six eight seven seven sixty. We've got sixty and sixty one are on both. One of them's a closure. This one's by plug. So let's see, what are we doing up here? We've got dry eye doing up here. We've got dry eye using plugs right there. So you know right away your answer is the 61. 
Oops. Come on, focus. See? By plug, I've got that word match. I don't need to look at anything else. I know 61 is going to be the answer, and I know I cannot match it with a 50 and an LT. That just makes no sense. So C is our answer for sure, which I have somewhere down here. There it is. That is all of them that I had for tonight. I can show you my book that that the netters book that she really liked real quick show you what the differences are on that one I think if I have it do I have it here yeah I do this is if you are going to go into coding a lot of surgical stuff like if you want to take a speciality and do um, cardiology or some sort of specialty. I love this book. It's on Amazon. Um, you can get it used um, for sure, but I haven't audited it all the way through, but I think it's really cool the way they've done the illustrations a lot better. Um, they do some glossary vocabulary that goes with the CPT codes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and then they draw all the pictures and then the pictures have little descriptions of what the procedure is and what's going on. I just think that's a fantastic idea. You know, if you're going to have me code a surgery and I don't know all the approaches or the vocabulary that might be associated with just these CPT codes, then that's just great. I love this book and thought it would be a wonderful tool for um, coding surgeries. I thought they did a wonderful job of organizing this. And they trimmed down the CPT code um, description without all the... fluff that this has in it with the there's all these things that tell you all this stuff underneath it that that are irrelevant you'll never be able to go look up the CPT assistant from December of 05 or the clinical examples in the radiology from the summer of whatever 19 February of 2019 is. They just have a lot of stuff down here that is just in the way. And I really liked the way Netter's book was um, put together. There's a little description about what's going on here. There's some glossary of terms and then some really nice anatomy drawn in there with... Um, Sometimes it's instruments drawn in there, how they would go in and approach the situation, positions for the patients and stuff. I thought that was fantastic. If you really wanted to go into real surgical coding and you wanted to work at a hospital and be able to rock people's socks off, take people's jobs away from them maybe, <laughs> become the supervisor, that would be a great book to have for sure for reference. Um, absolutely. Love it. These are some of the um, things that you're given when you're taking an AAPC course. They'll give you a description, documentation like this. It won't be highlighted like this is, but it will tell you to code it. Then you'll get it wrong, and then they'll give you this yellow version with it numbered as to... Here's your first one. This is your preoperative diagnosis. Number two is the fine needle aspiration and what you did. And then number three. And then they'll go into why they picked each diagnosis code or the procedure code, the rationale. 
um, they do do these dissections of the of the documentation, but none of this prepares you for that CPC exam. The CPC exam won't be done this way. It helps you maybe word search, which I want you to do for your exam, but the word searching you're going to be doing for your CPC exam is what's in these descriptions on the CPT codes. You need to be able to decide which ones are biopsies, which ones are biopsies, which ones are fine needle biopsies. Um, you need to decipher these words and word search these super fast, not what's in the, the notes like this. Because even when you're coding in real life world, everything's in the EHR. And as the doctor's dictating, and he's dictating these moths, he's clicking through an EHR and he'll say his moth surgery and how many stages and it'll automatically code as they're clicking through things. Um, you just review it and make sure it makes sense the way they did it. But um, these won't help you. They're fancy and look cool, but they're not going to help you for the CPC exam because the exam is already coded for you. They're going to give you a list of answers and, and they're all numbers and you just have to go to the numbers, see which one will word match with the question. And it's a big difference from what's inside the exam to what is in, in the, um, in the CPC exam versus what's in the course, for sure. Um, they'll have quizzes for anatomy and things like that, which will help. They'll have some CPT questions and examples. Um, they're just going to give you a lot of these dissection documentation, and you can't move forward throughout the course unless you finish these. A lot of these can be found online. They're already coded for you. Um, and you can breeze through these easier if you just go look up the answers, of course. Because the main thing that you are going to need is the extra practice on the multiple choice questions and um, getting faster at word searching for the multiple choice answers. That will help you more than anything. But they have, everybody has already posted all these answers and questions on Quizlets. They're there if you ever wanted to go there and look for them. A few of them are incorrect, but um, not every question in a scenario. But there might be a couple that are incorrect. I go through and try to do a couple of hours three days a week of going through practice questions with you for the AAPC exam and helping you learn how to do the the word searches for the proper answers reminding you how important it is to prep your book make sure you make notes of when they tell you to use the modifier make sure you box your codes Make sure that you note what's after the semicolon that you need to know. Make sure you're writing your examples in here because it will help you if you face one of those questions during the exam. Um, those kind of things will help you so much. Plus joining our chat group because we are keeping a huge list. And Jess, I have a bunch more information on test B that you and I can go over. Um, I'm keeping a log of people that are taking the exams last month and this month, and they're remembering what vocabulary terms were on their exam and coming back with that information and sharing it with me so I can share it with you. And then also what CPT codes they're circling, which ones were possible answers on their exam. 
or the answer that they picked that they thought was the right answer and then sharing that with me so I can share it with you guys. Um, and we share all that in our study group chat. If you want to find my study group chat that is on Messenger, come find me at Jen Brewer. Um, of course, I'm here on TikTok. My next TikToky one will be probably Wednesday night. Tonight's Monday. We can do Wednesday night. My YouTube is just the repeat lives that I do here on TikTok. So if you want to see any of my previous lives, they're there. And then I have a website, medicalcodingbygen.com. You can go there and just scroll down halfway down the page, and I have a free e &M quiz there. It's super hard. But also, if you do join the site, there is free uh, information on how to prep your book for you, already done for you. It's part of the online program that's free there. I've published... Um, the first three steps and the fourth step and when you go into that content it will show you step by step with pictures of what it looks like to prep your book and give you a description of what what we've got going on with screenshots and what you need to do to get ready for your see open and closed all that good stuff it'll show you exactly with screenshots on what to do there you can also schedule tutoring there if you want to with me before your exam um, I have one-on-one -on -one tutoring there if you want to schedule anything I do do um, guest tutoring for teachers through AAPC2 when they need help with their classes that's how some of people have come to me too and I also have page by page of course of all the CPT books pages with all my notes on it available on Etsy if you want them but I'm happy to teach you how to mark them up all by yourself um, so that you can do it yourself so I will do another live on Wednesday. Jess, you and I gotta I gotta share some information with you on um, Messenger about what's on exam B. I can't remember when you said your I know I've got it written down over here on my desk, but I know it's coming up in November when we're doing a retake. So I want to make sure I get you exam B's information. And if anybody is taking their exam this week. You could really make a difference in somebody's life by sharing any information you happen to gather about your exam um, during your exam and sharing it with me. Then I'll put it out there in the world for free and let everybody know what's on their exam if they happen to take one like yours. Um, I will go over more of that on Wednesday which exams I have the notes on and what information I have on those exams, the vocabulary terms and stuff that's on those to make sure that people that are taking their exam this weekend have that information because I know a couple of you are. So I want to go back over some of that. But just I want to make sure I get you some information too. Yes. Okay. Good. Tiffany, you too. All right. We'll go over exam B for sure on Wednesday. All right, guys. I will see you then. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope the questions and answers were helpful. And um, I hope the COPD information was helpful. And I'll see y'all in chat. You're welcome. More than more than happy to help. I want everybody to pass.